All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we are now live for the first ever live stream on the channel uh, where we're going to be playing from the brand new iPhone XS Max. There are, I don't know why, it just doesn't roll off the tongue whenever I say it. Uh, but yeah, the, the new iPhone, essentially the, the chunky fat boy one that is a lavish expense, but uh, myself being incredibly fortunate of choosing a profession where I play video games in my parents' garden uh, means it's tax deductible. So heavily discounted there uh, and yeah, like uh, it seems to be really good because I've been using this for um uh, what is it, approximately uh, just under a day now, I recorded uh, the Omega Red rank up and gameplay video, and in comparison to the X, what I played on before, um, I feel like it's, uh, you can definitely feel it is a little bit faster, and also I do like the uh, additional like 0 0.7 inch display, but on the absolute real, it is a very minimal upgrade, you know, it, it's an upgrade, but it, it doesn't feel like a, whoa, completely game changing one, but my my, oh my, uh, do I love it. Being a massive nerd man, uh, it's just so incredibly smooth now in terms of the loading times and transitions. Uh, but it was still really, really good on the X, man. The XS Max is just uh, uh, kind of a, an additional building block on top of that. Because uh, listening to the, uh, what was it, that wonderful uh, Apple conference full of uh, spiel and jargon, I believe the... Um uh, what is it? The uh, the X can handle like six uh, six hundred billion uh, processes with the uh, the the eleven chip. Uh, every second, whereas this one's like 5 trillion. But then again, man, I don't really know my stuff. All I know is it's faster, ladies and gentlemen. It's faster, and faster seems to be a good thing, to the best of my knowledge. But what is up to the, the people in chat today? Uh, Amino, Nif, Martin, Jufusen, uh, People, D.O., uh, Joseph, Clinton, Jones, Keith. Uh, hope you're all doing well today. And Lil Rel, uh, thank you very much, man. What is that? Nebula God or High Demigod would call some Proxima Midnight Synergy. I would say Neva. I, just, uh, I moved her up to Low Demigod. Uh, but yes, the Synergy doesn't... Uh, I don't know if I've got the, the Synergy criteria in there. But yeah, I think she's at a Low Demigod with the... Um, uh, what is it? The Proxima Synergy. But she's still nowhere near uh, kind of the level of what I would classify as a High Demigod tier or a God tier champion, just comparatively speaking. But Nebula's alright, you know. She's alright to lug around a double immunities character if you're bringing a Proxima Midnight and a Corvus, but, you know, comparatively speaking, there are much better double immunities champions. What's that? Rip93 Fourth, hope you're doing well, mate! Dude, thank you very much for the uh, the first super chat of the day. New phone already. Haha, ha, I'm too cheap to buy another phone. Gonna stick with my Pixel 2 XL until it falls apart in my hands. Hope you're well, mate. I think it's the case of, you know, like, uh, be it playing mobile video games all day and having, a you know, two channels that are fully committed to that. I was like, you know, I might, might as well be on the front line in terms of performance because then, um... Like, in terms of my video production, it makes stuff smoother, means I can put out more high-quality videos, and just makes the gaming content really, really dank, especially if there are any kind of, like, brand new mobile games that are coming out that are really, really snazzy. So, yeah, it's just, uh, just one of those, you know, uh, you know, essential business expenses. Uh, if you, you know, ask the, uh, uh, Her Majesty's Customs Revenue, this is 100% an essential business expense. Uh, but Rip93 Ford, thank you very much, uh, for the Super Chat, man. Let's get you up there as our blubberiest whale of the day. And dude, I really do appreciate all the support you've chucked my way. I swear you've been uh, pretty ride or die for almost the last two years of the channel. So I cannot thank you enough for your continued support, my friend. Uh, but anyway, let's get you up there. And uh, OBS seems to be being a lot more of a bitch today. Right, I believe that is in the, uh, the correct position now. Fantastic. It's pretty damn good. The speaker is significantly louder than the X as well, uh, which is fantastic. Because I love to play music about the house. Uh, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's, it's nice. It is, um, you know, if you've got the X, it's a fairly minimal upgrade. Uh, if you're upgrading for, from something like uh, the 7, though, uh, it would be a world of difference. So, uh, you know, I, what is that? I had the, the 7 and I went to the X and that just felt like a crazy world of difference. So I imagine, imagine going straight from anything like 7 or below to the XS Max. Uh, yes, you are going to feel like a completely uh, brand new game. But uh, it's really good. The I, I do like the even further extended display. Like that's one of the things I've always really liked about the um, the X is the the bigger screen because I feel like it makes a lot of the uh, the matches quite cinematic. 
because uh, you know you have a lot more room at the sides in comparison to some of the uh, the smaller phones there but also the fact that it's um uh, iPhone and MCOC and a lot of mobile games do cater to developing on iPhone. Just the performance is so incredibly smooth. And you know, if we have a look at the loading times, man, everything is so incredibly quick to render the characters and environment. So yeah, I friggin' love it, boys. I friggin' love it. I think just in comparison to the X, um, it has a, about 30% increased performance. Which the X, you know, is already doing really, really well, man. It's just a bit of icing on the cake. But I feel like... If there is something like an Axe 6 Legends run, the XS Max is going to be a huge advantage to anybody that might want to uh, obtain that Legends run if they're going to offer something like a 5-star uh, a Thanos again. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see what's up. I feel like uh, the cutoff time for the Act 5 Legends was so slow in comparison to what it could have been uh, that I feel like I'd be very tempted to go for the uh, potentially Act 6 one. But uh, also with something like Axix as well, now that we have the free-to-play account, and the free-to-play account is so stacked, we'd be able to do maybe an initial stream on that, and then go on the, the main account. But I don't know, it will be a case of, like, figuring out, um, and seeing. Have I checked out Crystal Opening Whale's 5-star Electro? I haven't checked out the video. Uh, is there anything specifically unique to it? Because I can just imagine it's a bit more of a stacked version of the 4-star Electro. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything cool in that video, man, let me uh, let me know. Is there anything uh, worth uh, picking apart there? <clears throat> Would I rather rank free a 5-star Thor, Ragnarok, or Kingpin, both unduped? Uh, I would rather save the skill catalyst uh, for a better character. Uh, than either one of those, because for Ragnarok would be a rank free option if you had him awakened and at quite a high signature level, and also had Gladiator, Hulk, and Cork. But considering the characters on Duped, he's not really worth it. Kingpin, I wouldn't say it's really worth putting uh, skill T4 CC into. Uh, so yeah, in your circumstance, I would hold. What I think of the new phone? I love it, Jonathan. Very very quick there. Is Apple sponsoring the stream? No, I'm just a filthy Apple fanboy there, Amino. But if I do ever have any, uh, what is it, paid sponsorships, they are always uh, very visibly disclosed at the start of, um, uh, what is it, any video content. Or, you know, I'll put it at the uh, the top line of the uh, the video as well. Just to let you know that my uh, opinions are being influenced by cash. But it, it's in this circumstance that I am actually just a filthy Apple fanboy who does uh, love Apple products. <laughs> I've been using the same iPad Air 2 for four years and it still works as well as it did back in 2014, back when I was starting university. Uh, not sure why people are buying these new iPhones that cost a ton more. Um, I, I think you'll find that, again, I don't know if you've played Marvel Contest of Champions on one of the latest iPhones, but there is a significant increase to performance. Granted, the game still runs on older phones, like... You know, I, I, I would f probably say if you spent about 15 minutes with an iPhone X, uh, you'd probably fall in love with gaming on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're one of those people that doesn't uh, feel the need to be on the cutting edge, more power to you, my friend. If you can, you know, if you're super happy with your device that you purchased in 2014, great, you can spend your money on that. But, uh, you know, us filthy tech nerds, my friend, we uh, we love to be on the, uh, the cutting edge of stuff. There we go. <clears throat> Parry is so OP. I mean, it's a central combat mastery for sure. Uh, is it better to rank 3 a 5-star or rank 5 a 4-star? It certainly depends on the character. Uh, but ideally, if it's the same character and they're both awakened, then it's better to rank 3 a 5-star character because eventually that character, uh, if you choose, can reach a higher ceiling of power. And also, a uh, uh, rank 3 5-star is slightly more powerful stat-wise than a rank 4. For five star, but there is the advantage of like four star dupe levels are significantly easier to acquire than five star ones. So yeah, it's a very complicated question. But if you, you give me a specific scenario, um, then I can give you uh, some more specific advice. Does a Mega Red uh, or Emma need to be awakened? I don't believe either character needs to be awakened to be good. But uh, they both certainly benefit from it quite a bit. I think Omega Red needs to be awakened more than Emma does. Um, but they both have very desirable awakened abilities. But uh, I'd say Emma is the better unawakened character. Just to pull out the crystal. Because you are missing like a fair bit of damage if you don't have Omega Red's awakened ability. 
So, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're, like, I I've done rank up and gameplay videos on both of the characters if you want to have a look at uh, uh, Undupe the Mega Red versus Emma Frost. But I think they're both really, really good characters, and they both have their advantages and disadvantages to uh, disadvantages in comparison to each other, depending on the scenario where you want to take them to. But yeah, Emma Frost, I really like her, man. I think she's, um, at the moment, my favorite just because she's so easy to play and does so much stuff. I really want to take her up to 550 and um, uh, awaken her so that I can bring her into Alliance Quest. But I'm going to wait for the uh, the Emma Frost because in five days' time we're going to do a massive uh, Clan HQ sponsored opening for both Emma Frost and also a Mega Red. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty damn excited for that one. That should be an awfully good time. There's a part of me because those those sponsored crystal openings they go they go down so well, man. They get so so many views. Don't know if I should like double up because I always have so many uh, different brands that are emailing me looking to sponsor the uh, the channel. So I don't know, man. Could could have double double sellout opening weekends. That could um, could be interesting to do. Open even more future Grandmaster crystals that are paid for by somebody else. I mean, it doesn't seem like a terrible idea. Which symbiote buff am I most excited for? Um, I don't know. They both look really, really good. Um, uh, I'm excited for both for, like, different reasons. The Carnage one uh, seems very, very fun to play around with in high-tier content, uh, especially Labyrinth of Legends. I think Carnage is arguably going to be one of, like, the top ten options for Labyrinth of Legends. However, I think he's going to have a really big weakness against scenarios where he can't bleed. So, yeah, he might not be like super super good for those but still um carnage being a cosmic character cosmic has like the best matchup against maestro and maestro is one of the biggest uh, annoyances when it comes to labyrinth of legends so yeah i don't know i'm, I'm really excited for the uh, the carnage buff though uh I'm, I'm also excited for the venom buff like they look they both look so good man they both look absolutely insane so yeah, I'm really looking forward to both. Five-star Carnage pool, I'm not even mad. You shouldn't be mad, Miles. Like, Carnage is, you know, we are a, a few weeks away from him being, like, one of the, the best, like, damage characters in the game. The ramp-up looks absolutely insane. The, the thing is, with a lot of the Realm of Legends videos that you see from Carnage, because uh, I've been watching, like, quite a few videos from the Carnage and Venom beta, um, is that by the time the opponent is uh, by the time Carnage has got all his buffs and he's starting to get into that big damage territory, the opponent's just dead. They've just dropped dead. He's just way too powerful, man. So yeah, I cannot wait to uh, see a little bit more from Carnage. Oh, man. Going the wrong way there. Right. Just because the phone's slightly bigger, um, I appear to be failing a few inputs here. I'm dashing backward. Right, there we go. <clears throat> I'll sort our right out. Straight in the bin, boys. Selling that soul, seeing, might as well sell your body as well. Well, I believe that's where I have to draw the line, Hobbit, but I do appreciate the interest as well. You know, it's, it's good to know that there is a uh, market for that. But uh, on this occasion, I will uh, I will politely decline, you know, maybe in about 15 years when I'm slightly less beautiful um, and maybe all the energy is sapped out of me. I might I might take you up on that offer, but uh, yeah, hit me up via Instagram DM. 15 years, 20, uh, 2035. Can I start a new channel called MCOC Alliance Redemption where you join alliances that have been decimated by people leaving after Alliance War season ends and help them rebuild the gold one or better? Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, is that kind of like a, a Gordon Ramsay-esque uh, thing where I go into alliances and I just yell at the leaders to get their shit together? Well, it's probably not the leaders' fault in all honesty. It's, you know, there, there is a huge... Um, when, when it comes to alliances, I have never seen more of a wave... Uh, of like people just going fuck this shit after a season. I'm done. I want to go casual. Just everybody seems to be in that circumstance. Well, not everybody. Well, I, I think the majority of alliances have experienced it since Alliance War, where you've had at least a few players that have gone like, I'm just not interested at playing the, at this level anymore. I just want to chill out. I want to have a good time playing the game casually. Because yeah, I do believe uh, Alliance War is. Um, 
a bit bit of a stressor, and I don't believe they should be putting stress on alliances. I believe they should be putting, if they want to put competitive stress on people, they should do it uh, on an uh, individual basis, on something like 5v5 competitive alliance war PvP, something along those lines. So yeah, anyway, uh, what do we have? PJ Vice, dude, thank you very much for the, uh, the super chat. Any word on the New York Comic Con meetup or an MCOC Venom movie meetup? Uh, pretty awesome that it comes out in cinemas whilst we're out there. Uh, so for New York Comic Con, um, I don't know if anybody's organizing a meetup. I heard through the grapevine that Brian might be, uh, you know, saying we're all going to meet at Dave and Buster's on Saturday, like I believe we did last time. Um, but aside from that, just because everybody was there during the day, so it, it didn't feel super necessary to have an external meetup. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be like around the MCOC booth pretty much every single day. I think you'll be able to find me quite easily. Uh, I'll also be tweeting out when, you know, I'm at the stand as well. If you are really struggling to find me, just hit me up on Twitter, uh, and I will, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, meet up with you, man, and shake your hand for the $5 super chat, uh, but absolute mad love to you, PJ Vice. I cannot believe New York Comic Con is so close. It is honestly ridiculous. It's, uh, what is it, 11 days? 11 days till I fly out? Oh, my goodness. It is coming around so fast. So fast. I am incredibly excited uh, for this year. I think it's going to be by far... Well, I mean, last year was incredible, but this year... Uh, I feel like the turnout is just going to be absolutely off the charts. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, this game has many things to pay for, but it's still fun. Again, I, I feel like the secret to a lot of mobile gaming and... Um, specifically Marvel Contest of Champions is just being very honest with yourself about what stuff you enjoy because it's very easy once you get into these games to like want to do everything and expand your roster as quickly as possible and try and feel like you want to compete but if you get caught into that trap and you're caught into the whale milking trap so you just want to you know play the game at your own pace kind of enjoy it for what it is and what you enjoy the game for um, and yeah, just at the end of the day, kind of like set goals outside of maybe alliance-based stuff and figure out what you want to do and why you enjoy playing this game. But for me, I just enjoy the combat and the new monthly challenges that come out. They're kind of some of the biggest stuff for me. Like, uh, and Alliance Quest and Alliance War. Um, you know, they get repetitive very, very easily. I don't think by any stretch of the imagination they are some of the most exciting things at the game. But for, you know, myself on the main account, they're a way to continually gear up the roster so that I can stay, uh, you know, kind of like relatively competitive with the rest of the in-game community and be on top form for my Marvel Contest of Champions YouTube channel, where I spout uh, an inordinate amount of shit every single day. You couldn't move around the booth last year, it was so packed. It was on the first day, so this is um, something like the first day, it was crazy, like at the MCOC booth. First day was by far the busiest day, and I think Sunday was the quietest day. Sunday was really, really quiet, like literally to the point where um, I think there were only like six or seven of us doing the beat the boss thing, whereas on the first day I think there was a, consistently a line of about 50 people for it. So yeah, Sunday was by, by far the quietest day. If you, uh, you know, are interested in going to New York Comic Con and having MCOC booth when it is quite quiet, but Thursday, just to set the expectation last year, it was so busy on Thursday. And this year, it's probably going to be so busy on the Thursday. I enjoy the game for the dank memes. I really like the, um... I think Marvel Contest of Champions has one of the most interesting gaming communities out there. And because, like, it's not a super, super big game, but it's not, like, super small either. I think the community's tight-knit. There's a lot of, like, good banter uh, and a lot of interesting content and memes that come from uh, all sorts of people. So, yeah, I just find it, I find it a ton of fun to play, man. Plus, I do love the combat and the, the complexity of characters and all of the, the Marvel Champions. Because uh, MC is one of those games where you look at it and you're like, oh man, there's not really too much to this game. And then, you know, you sit down and play for a week and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much to this game. You know, you'll look up uh, uh, some videos of like high tier gameplay and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what anybody's talking about. What? How are they, how are they stunning all the time? How, how are they avoiding the special attacks? How is this man getting hits in without even, uh, you know, getting uh, <laughs> an interval at all? Yeah, it's one of those games that is, uh, what's the, what's the tagline? It's like, um, it's like easy to learn, difficult to master. I, th I think that's it. 
because I think MCOC, you know, if you sit down, if you watch a few tutorials, it's quite easy to learn the basics of Marvel Contest of Champions, but in order to master this game, it's bloody difficult, man. There's so much complexity when it comes to um, uh, all sorts of character interactions. And, you know, there's almost 130 characters in the game, and knowing all the abilities and all the stuff that they're going to do throughout the fight, uh, and what you need to play around, you know, it, it just becomes uh, an increasingly uh, big challenge to... Uh, have all of that knowledge stored. And especially with new characters coming out every couple of weeks, it's uh, diff very difficult for people to keep up, man. And that's why uh, one of the reasons I believe the YouTube scene is just so popular, especially for quick tip and tutorial videos. There we go. Right. I'm just going to quickly make sure my phone's on charge because I feel like my charger here is a little bit, a little bit busted because uh, it keeps on uncharging and charging again. Right, it seems to be good for now, but it's it's been vibrating a couple of times, so yeah. Can I make a master mode challenge? I haven't even done heroic, man. I'm so far behind. Just because I was like ill from uh, <laughs> what was it the uh, the first day onwards, I've just fallen so far behind. So I really do apologise for that, my friend. Um, but yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff. I want to do uh, free-to-play uncollected. It's kind of the, the thing on my schedule. I'm even going to do that tomorrow, Monday or Tuesday. But I also want to, you know, make some free-to-play progress in Act 5. So I think there's probably not going to be a freestyle master mode challenge this month. Uh, so I do apologize. But I don't know. I, I might get around to it. I just need to grind out heroic to, in all fairness. So yeah, maybe. Maybe, my friend. But it might come, you know, some sometime during the last week. Um, do I think Emma Frost and Omega Red or God tier? If not, maybe High Demigod. I think both of the characters, I would uh, comparatively categorize them as High Demigod tier characters. But I want to see how they perform in comparison to like certain top options. So yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about Emma Frost being arguably a better Iceman. And I once I like fully uh, level her up, so I'm going to wait till the Emma Frost opening, see if we can get her awakened as a four star, see if we get five star version. And then I want to do quite a bit of uh, testing against Iceman, just uh, so I can figure out which one I believe is uh, a little bit better. Um, but I don't know, I kind of feel like she's not necessarily completely a better Iceman, she's just a bit more of an alternate Iceman, if that makes sense. But I feel like Emma Frost has quite a bit more damage than Iceman, when played correctly. Because Emma Frost damage feels great, man. The 330, uh, if you watch the Rank Up and Gameplay video, she was tearing through everything so fast. Um, faster than my uh, Unawakened Mega Red, uh, but you know, he was missing a bit of damage in comparison. Yeah, it came out, uh, what was it, yesterday, Champion Nova. Uh, so yeah, got our hands on it, and the, those loading times, my boy, they are fire, my friend. See, rank 5 Sentinel, Stark Spider-Man, I'd definitely give Stark Spider-Man out of those two. How's the iPad Mini? I have never played MCOC on an iPad Mini. I do have, um, what is it, uh, an iPad which I use for watching movies uh, when I'm traveling. Um... But, uh, or like playing video games, sometimes I, I prop it up as well, but uh, the performance on the iPad, I, f I forgot which one, I think that's like the iPad Pro 12 inch, um, it's nowhere near as good as the iPhone X, like much slower loading times, the graphics as well are significantly less crisp. Because as well, um, it, I, f I feel like when it comes to the iPad, like they've kind of stretched the game a little bit. It feels like that in a lot of circumstances. So stuff feels a lot uh, crisp and it doesn't have uh, as powerful as a processor. Um, so yeah, just not not quite as uh, as spectacular. And plus, like I find the iPad screens, I can play on an iPad okay, but I'm much better on playing like a, a phone, on a phone screen, which you know I hold like a PlayStation Portable or something, because I used to grow up playing like Nintendo DS and PSP. <laughs> Right, let's go for an intercept there. Oh, bit of Black Widow gameplay. I remember when Black Widow was the absolute dog's bollocks. Everybody used to play her back when she was a frigging god, but now, boy, oh, she is uh, a little bit underwhelming. Uh, 
Um, is Carnage rank five worthy? Uh, in my opinion, um, depends what you want to use him for. Probably, I wouldn't say he's probably going to be a, a super rank five worthy character. Because I can't think of many scenarios. You know, mainly if you have a rank five champion, it's either for Labyrinth of Legends and Alliance War. But ideally, you want both uh, to get a really solid rank five. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think Carnage is going to be too useful in Alliance War. Uh, and aside from that, I think he's going to do everything you need him to do at like rank 4. But hey, if you really like Carnage, you want to take him up to rank 5, fair play man. More power to you. But yeah, we'll have to see. Because again, like the, the Carnage and Venom, like it is a beta. So they might reduce stuff. They might increase it a little bit more. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with either of the characters. That's why they're doing a bit of beta testing. Uh, so I don't want to talk about, you know, like tier of the characters yet. Until the cha changes are like, okay, we're happy with them. Uh, they're about to go live. And at that point, then I will uh, do a video where we insert them into the tier list. Uh, but let's chuck in, uh, what is it? A Mega Red here and a bit of Emma Frost as well. Why not, boys? Let's go for it. How many points do you think you'll need for Sabretooth? I would imagine for Sabretooth, um... Ooh, anything above 3.5 million. I think 4 million is probably the, the safe go-to score. But yeah, the Carnage buff is not live yet, so we're not going to talk about his tier until the stuff is all finalized. And then I'm very happy to talk about it after that. But at the moment, it looks like, just comparatively speaking, both champions would be at least uh, what I would classify as a high demigod tier champion in the uh, the current comparative state of the game. But again, the buffs are not 100% final yet, so don't make any uh, premature rank ups <laughs> just yet, because uh, you know they might uh, go down a little bit. Just, it's just good to have that expectation. Hopefully they won't, um, but fingers crossed. Right, I need um, more power than this goddamn Mordo, and then I can parry him. Come on, Mordo. Oh, you son of a bitch. Let's go, mate. Right, well, he's not doing anything for me, so we're just going to annihilate this man. Yeah, just because we're not on infinite yet, uh, it's incredibly difficult to bait out special attacks. Oh, thank you very much, Lex. Dude, I mas massively appreciate it. Uh, just bought a four-star Wolverine for a premium. Does he need to be duped or not? He's got a lot of damage and a bit of healing. Um, unawakened. But when you awaken him, that's where you get his like really big regen. So, ideally, he does need to be awakened if you want him for the big regeneration there. But, you know, Wolverine is one of those characters that for a while has been falling a little bit behind, just speaking in comparison, because we've had, like, better characters that can have more reliable regenerations and deal more damage. Like, I think Blade was one of the uh, characters that have kind of, just comparatively speaking, put Wolverine to the side a bit, and I feel like a Mega Red as well is another character that puts him down, but he's still very useful. If if you're progressing through the game but you know depends where you're at if you're fairly early on in the game that's a huge jackpot win he's gonna get you incredibly far but yeah all depends like where your roster is at and what you are trying to shoot for next in Marvel contest of champions right okay let's go for the uh, the fully maxed out uh, roster now and uh, grind a little bit more gold how does it feel to play a Mega Red? Um, not too bad. There's a, there's a lot to juggle when you're playing a Mega Red. Um, and a lot to keep track of. I like playing Emma Frost more than I like playing a Mega Red. Just as my initial, uh, gameplay reaction from playing both of the characters at 3.30. But then again, I haven't played either one extensively, so I can't super commentate. But they, they're, both, they, they're both very fun characters to play that can do a lot, and I like that. But Emma Frost is really, really fun to play. She's just uh, very intuitive, very, very easy to get a handle on, uh, and is just a very effective character. How good is MCOC on the iPhone XS? It's going to be pretty good on that, but the iPhone XS Max just has a bit of a bigger display if you want a bit more of a cinematic feeling to it. On the XS, it's going to be a little bit better than the X. That's pretty much it. But yeah, if you get anything like, really with the iPhone 8 or above, you're kind of uh, in a very top region for uh, Marvel Contest of Champions and mobile gaming. 
There we go. Straight in the bin, boys. I think anything over 3.5 million should be uh, pretty good for Sabretooth, but 4 million plus for safety. Should I use my Carnage now? He hasn't been buffed on live servers yet, so the answer is no. Uh, but as soon as the buff goes live, which is probably going to be, I would assume, anywhere between uh, two to six weeks, depending on how happy they are with the beta. I don't know if they can get it in like the next update build. But yeah, we're going to have to see. I know they have to send in builds like, it sounds like a week early. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure on that one. Right. Because the screen is a little bit bigger, some of my uh, hand motions are off a little bit. Uh, see, what would I recommend for somebody that has like 10 4 stars and is looking to get their first uh, 5 star? Um, what are what are some of the ways to to get your first ever five star character? I don't know. It's it's really like figuring out where you are on the progression path in Marvel Contest of Champions, really, and what you should be shooting for next. So I'd have a look at a video called the Progression Path 2018, because you know the more you work up in terms of content, the more rewards you are going to be able to get that are of a higher tier. Uh, so yeah, if you got four star characters, and if you can get really, really good at playing them, and if you got some good four star characters, uh, you take them up to rank four, level forty. You can get the collector down if you're super good at playing, and then you can get uncollected down, and uh, then you can farm five star characters and six star champions like it is nobody's business. So yeah, I'd have a look at a video called the progression path, but you know, there's uh, that's probably the best thing to focus on. It's not like how can I immediately get one five star champion. Champion, but what should I be doing next in Marvel Contest of Champions that is going to be of the, the biggest benefit to my roster and account growth? Uh, question from Melbourne. Hey, what's up, Randall? Hope you're doing well. I have a five star Stark Enhanced Spider Man and Blade Buff at rank four, but if I'm awakened, I can take one to rank five. Who should I rank up? Uh, depends on your Alliance War path and obligations, I would say. I would be very inclined to go for the Stark Enhanced Spider Man over Blade. Uh, just because Stark Enhanced, there have been a lot of new defenders this year and new characters, which Blade isn't very good against. Like, um, to give you a few examples, Iron Man Infinity War, Korg. Um, we also have Emma Frost, um, Omega Red to a certain extent as well, where Stark and Aunt Spider-Man is just really, really good for fighting. So yeah, Stark Spidey is still just one of the, uh, the absolute Don champions. But Blade can be, you know, incredibly valuable as well, depending on what you're trying to do at the moment. But I'd probably go for Stark in your scenario there, Randall. Like... I think my, if I could pick one now, if I only had to pick one character to have at rank 5, uh, if the other stayed at rank 4, I'd probably have Stark at rank 5 and uh, Blade at rank 4. Just because, again, a lot of the new champion design has been like very like, how do we make a character that Blade cannot face roll very quickly? And also stuff like Sentinel as well, and uh, Bishop. Um, you know, there are a lot of very, very good Stark matchups that have come in this year. How many points should be earned to get Sabretooth? Anything above 3.5 million should be pretty good. 4 million for safety, though, my friend. Better safe than salty. That's always my motto. Uh, you're 900 five-star shards away. Uh, basic or the next featured. You probably just want to open basic crystals. Unless you are at a kind of a level where nothing or almost nothing is going to benefit you from the basic pool. And even then, like, it's probably still an, a good idea just to go for the, the basics so you can maximize the amount of duplicate five stars you can. So you can get, you know, the most amount of six star champions possible if you are looking at, you know, the future of your roster. But again, it's kind of up to you. Like, they're all kind of different gambles. If you want to hold out like a month and see if the uh, the brand new next uh, five star featured crystal is going to be worth it. But the featured crystals so far, they, they've been set up to be very, very hit and miss. So you're either going to get like a really good character or one that is just absolutely rubbish and you're probably never going to use. So yeah, especially like the current one is very hit and miss at the moment. Um, I've opened, what is it? I, I think I opened five of them and like one of them was really good. Archangel on the free-to-play account. One of them was pretty good, Awakening My Massacre. And then I got like, uh, I think it was like Groot, Black Panther, Civil War. And did I get another character or have I just opened four? 
But yeah, as you can see, just by the examples of Groot and Black Panther Civil War, I'm just not going to use those characters and they are both on the free-to-play account. Who's better, a 5-star MGK or a 2-star M&M? A 1-star M&M would be significantly superior to even a 6-star Awakened MGK, Samoa Joe. Uh, and that's not my opinion, these are just, uh, these are facts, my friend. Would I rather take Blade up to rank 5 or Corvus up to rank 2? I mean, in the current state of Alliance War, and if that was my focus and priority, then I would go for Corvus over Blade, because 6-star Corvus, you're going to be able to get him up to rank 3 one day, and I imagine at rank 3, he is going to be, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty disastrous for some PvP content. Yo, what is up, Tony? Good morning to you in Wisconsin, my friend. Uh, do I think I should work on a rank 2 6-star Captain America Infinity War or a 565 Stark? And you've already done a 565 Medusa and done a few runs in LOL. Uh, shall I wait for Act 6? I mean, if if you're not dying for a character for Alliance War, um, you know, the, sense, the more sensible answer is probably to wait till... Uh, Act 6, because I feel like that is just around the corner now. You know, they said it was going to be 2018 release, uh, and I'm interested to um, uh, see what comes. But I think, I don't know, both, both are really good options, and it really does depend what the Act 6 rewards are, because I have a feeling, because, you know, like in Act 5, they're offering like stuff like rank up gems. I don't know if they're going to do it in Act 6 that they have like 6 star rank up gems as well. Um, I would imagine we might see some of those potentially. For 100% or maybe some chapter clears, you know, it really depends on the difficulty of Act 6. But, uh, yeah, it's it's all about what you're kind of looking to do next in MCOC. But, you know, if you're playing uh, competitively in Alliance War, um, that Stark and Arts Spider-Man could be insanely valuable right now. But again, depends what exactly you're after. Yo, what is up, Tara? I hope you're doing well today. Is the new iPhone XS Max cool? It is uh, is very cool, depending on your definition of cool. But uh, yeah, I really like it, man. It's uh, very nice. MGK's special free is your beard's weird. Oh no, shots fired there, my friend. Hey, what is up, Brian? Dude, it's currently raining here in England as well. We have had an incredibly gloomy day. Uh, it's my friend uh, Charles' uh, birthday uh, party this evening. We're having a uh, bit of a massive house party at my friend Ryan's. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That should be a very, very fun time. What is it? It's 11 minutes past 3 in the afternoon. Uh, about 6 o'clock, my girlfriend finishes work. And then i got to start... Get, i got to get in the kitchen, mate. i got to cook some dinner for us so that uh, food is ready for the time she comes back so that we can, you know, quickly get ready uh, and go out and get drunk and celebrate uh, my friend Charles's, uh, what is it, 23rd birthday. So, yeah, it should be a banging evening, man. I'm really looking forward to it. House party is going to be lit, boys. I am so excited. There are so many people going tonight that I haven't seen in... Um, uh, you know, quite a long time, so it's always nice to uh, uh, spend some time with friends, have a bit of a catch-up, chat a copious amount of shit, and get uh, completely wankered. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, man. Gloomy days are the best days. I mean, it kind of depends on your mood and vibe. If you just want to stay inside and play video games, I 100% agree. Like, I, I like I like being inside, you know, friggin' all snuggled up, just chilling, man, watching some friggin' Netflix and playing Marvel Contest of Champions. It feels good. But if you want to go out and get drunk, get on the piss, oh, mate, can appreciate a little bit of sunshine. What scene signature drink? Uh, I don't know. It, it, it really depends. I, uh, I have a bit of a sweet tooth, and I enjoy uh, all stuff like kind of like fruit-based ciders. I like a little bit of WKD, and I know some people love to hate on WKD, but essentially it's alcohol and sugar. And I don't think independently people, you know, like to hate on alcohol or like to hate on sugar. Uh, and I find they make a pretty good combination. But also, I'm very happy to like. I, I usually like having quite um. Uh, quite a sweet drink, but then if I'm like on a mission to get absolutely tanked, then I will have uh, shots of something much stronger, uh, and I can shot pretty much everything, anything. So yeah, whether it's rum or vodka or just whatever. Not not overly fond of uh, Jägermeister. Can knock a bit of Sambuca back, but yeah, depends. Uh, depends on the mood. Depends on the vibe. But I don't know. I don't find. Uh, uh, well, I don't know, I might be on a little bit of a mission tonight, but usually I'm not uh, going super overboard, because I do, uh, what is it, usually have work the next day. I don't want to wake up and be in a complete coma for the entire day. 
So Mojo, the question is, am I invited for party? Uh, no, you're not because you don't know Charles, unfortunately, Sir Mojo. But, you know, I can tell you about it tomorrow on the live stream if you want. But, you know, if you be friend Charles, hey, you might get invited to his 24th. Who knows, mate? Oh, no, I'm, I'm interested to see um, what next month's characters are going to be, Tim. Because I feel like they're going to be a couple of very obscure Venom-related characters. But also, I hope that they have some good synergies. And, I'd, yeah, I'd love to um, see some more Mystic Champions just because of the power gain, man. It's very, very nice. So you can get drunk on breezes, mate. Well, you never really get drunk on uh, breezes. I, 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 you know, I don't mind a Smirnoff Ice. I, I enjoy them. They, they do taste delicious because they are essentially, uh, you know, 90% sugar and well, uh, let's be realistic, 96% sugar and 4% uh, alcohol. And I like the sugar, man. I, I can't, I can't complain. But obviously, that's not going to get me drunk. So obviously, it needs something a little bit harder in uh, the combination. How do I feel on Prof Hoff's video about the guy who got a five-star cinematic and an Odin? Um, I've actually I've seen quite a bit of debate on that one. I have the personal opinion that I am absolutely fine with offers like that existing because it's kind of a good incentive for people to like get back into Marvel Contest of Champions if they haven't been playing for a certain amount of months. And I feel like you know any any savvy player that knows what they're doing in the the span of six months can obtain like you know 10 five star champions like pretty much uh, at least at least one six star champion if you're smashing out uncollected 100 percent every single month so yeah for an odin's and also um a single five star crystal like that is still barely like five to ten percent of the rewards that you could get in that time period if you actually played the game so, yeah, I just, I, I don't really have a, a problem with it, in all honesty. I know some people uh, who don't seem to uh, have much of an interest in progressing, or, I, d I don't know, like, some people were very unhappy with it. They were like, oh, man, why do you get better rewards for, for not playing than playing? And I'm kind of, like, sitting there, and I'm like, well, if you're, if you're doing the right stuff in the game, if you're making some good progression towards stuff, then, yeah, you're going to get, like, 20 times the rewards of this single five-star crystal and an Odin's. You know, you could probably get what that guy got uh, just from logging calendars alone and uh, various stuff that occurs. So yeah, I personally don't really have a problem with it. I think logging into something like that uh, is going to make people go, Oh man, well maybe this game's a little bit better now. Um, and the game is a little bit better. It's just Kabam is still, you know. Uh, Kabam. Kabam is still Kabam. MCOC is going to add Raya. Yeah, they could add some uh, Venom characters. Raya and I believe... Who was the other one people were saying? We're certainly going to have to see. Santiago, thank you very much for the super chat, my dude. What makes Corvus so great? Type in, like, five-star Corvus Alliance War gameplay uh, into YouTube, and the question will be visibly answered for you, my friend. Mate, when are we meeting, says Deadly Stark. I mean, considering I don't know you very well, Deadly Stark, um, uh, it's it's going to have to be a no from me from now. But if you're in New York Comic Con, I'll, I'll meet you. Say, say hi to you if you're there. But aside from that, uh, unfortunately, I, uh, you know, my, my mother has always told me it's a bad idea to uh, meet strangers off the internet. Uh, unless it's via the Tinder app. <laughs> Four Star Wolverine or Voodoo, which one to awaken? Um, oh, I'd say, you, I don't know, depends which one you prefer more. Voodoo needs to arguably be awakened a little bit more than Wolverine, and I'd say Voodoo is a bit more useful than Wolverine. But if you really like Wolverine, he's just a very, very simple character that is very effective at regenerating. But yeah, there's arguments for both, I would say. Personal preference, my friend. Oh, the Venom buff does look very good. Uh, should I use a uh, Awakening Gem? Uh, should I take Void or Quake to rank 5? I'll definitely Void out of those two. 100% mate. Uh, do I think like, achievements like Elder's Bane and LOL should give permanent perks or special access to more lucrative modes and rewards? If positive, how would I do it? 
Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the, the whole uncollected system. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think they should have too many of those, in all honesty, but I feel like they're, they're kind of like nice milestones to like, you know, motivate people toward for getting a nice increase on their rewards. And I would like to see, um, uh, another one of those come the time of Act 6. Because, yeah, I think it's like a, a nice little progression milestone, and it feels, like, really good when you get it down. I think, you know, the biggest criticism about specifically Uncollected is just the Collector fight is, uh, complete shit. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's gotten easier over time with all these, uh, powerhouse new champions that have been introduced since. Uh, hi, Scene. How are you, brother? Have you doing well? I heard I got the iPhone X Mac. Excess mass. Do I still have the iPhone X? I do indeed. Uh, I've got it for what is it? Just secondary play. Just because I can allows me to grind on you know both accounts at the same time. Because I've got what is it? Two MCOC accounts and one Marvel Strike Force account to keep up. So yeah, it's just it's it's good for when I'm just uh, chilling there in the mornings, trying to get everything done, uh, so I can you know auto play some easy stuff on the main account while I grind some fights out on the free to play account, and then you know switch uh, vice versa. So yeah, it's just good for uh, grinding. But I'm I'm gonna be keeping my old iPhone X. Come on! It's the best gal, Spider Gwen, getting that damage in. Right, let's see what we can do. Bring another five combo, special two is probably gonna seal the deal. Damn, that was some smooth Spider Gwen gameplay. I was liking that. Oh, Hobbit, I completely agree, man. Especially with the, uh, what was it? The Omega Red has a really, really good synergy with Sabretooth, which gives him more bleed. Uh, and also, you know, that has the additional synergy with Killmonger of giving him more ability accuracy reduction intervals as well. So yeah, there's just some cool stuff Sabretooth can do, man. Uh, and he's so powerful in terms of the damage. So he's a character uh, that has just been uh, getting better and better. I feel like Sabretooth is definitely one of my favorite characters of this year. But there have been a lot of characters this year that I think have been really interesting. Uh, interestingly designed what's that uh the ad in front of this stream was for clinic makeup how many people here would use that well i mean i, I you know I, I i'm not too sure if you're aware of this but uh i believe to the best of my knowledge um google's uh ad system is mainly targeted on the individual bugs so it might be something related to your search history so i'm not really too sure what uh you've been looking at man some uh, some beauty tutorials some so zoella vlogs <laughs> but uh I, I believe that's the way that youtube advertising works a lot of machine learning kind of you know figuring out the stuff that you're looking at and spending time watching and then marketing you know similar products to you to the best of my knowledge but uh Again, depends what you have enabled or disabled. But yeah, I'm not really too sure uh, why uh, stuff would be appearing. But hey, Doug, you've probably been shopping for, I would assume, one of your many girlfriends. Because, uh, you know, we've got Christmas coming up. Got to keep them uh, and happy. And obviously a playboy like yourself has uh, a lot of women to satisfy uh, both physically and also emotionally via gifts. For lol, should I use my generic gem on Star Lord or Stark Spidey? Uh, depends. Um, depends on what you, who you want to bring to Labyrinth. I mean, there are pros and cons versus Stark Spidey, Star Lord. I would, if I was going to do 100% again, I would prefer to use Stark Spidey over Star Lord, just because I don't. Star Lord's annoying to use in Labyrinth uh, because of the evade, and if you get a badly timed evade you can lose all your damage like that whereas stark spidey he's quite good at recovering and coming back um and has additional uses in like certain fights like falcon and war machine so yeah there's a i don't know it's a little bit about a pro con thing with both of the characters but if i had to pick one i'd pick stark spidey uh, but i'd be aware of the magneto matchup being quite a bit of a pain in the ass i have five star venom ball is he good he is not uh, see, now I'm trying to rank to my 5 star, but I can only hold 4 alpha catalyst. How do I get up to 5? Uh, you need to level up, my friend, to the best of my knowledge. If you've, uh, uh reduced alpha cap, uh, which means doing a, uh, uh, 
what is it? Yeah, just uh, as much Act 4 as you possibly can, my friend. Just put progress in that, chuck an XP boost on. But if you have low catalyst caps, it's associated with level. Um, hey, see, so new to your stream, was wondering if I should rank up Rogue or Hyperion? Definitely Hyperion, out of those two characters' texts. We have a, uh, if you type in, like, five-star Hyperion rank up an Awakening video, there is some sick Hyperion gameplay out. Uh, if you want to see me playing some Hyperion on the channel. But yeah, Hyperion is such a beast mode character. He's incredibly good. Oh, thank you very much, Hobbit. Dude, massively appreciate that, my man. Mad love to you. Dude, I hope everything's going well in Thailand. Eminem sh shots are as powerful as Stark and Aunt Spider-Man Special 2. I mean, you're not you're not wrong there, my friend. You're not wrong. That Special 2 does feel great to fire off. Do you think we'll have a new God-tier champion this year? Blade level? Um, I, I, I feel like Marvel Contest of Champions have made a very conscious effort to move away from champions that dominate absolutely everything and turn it into a bit more of a counter based game as in there are like lots of like little different things going on and all sorts of the new characters when you're fighting them but I don't know I think Corvus is kind of the closest thing we've got to uh, a really really insane meta dominating character this year but, uh, yeah, I don't know. We, we might potentially do. I mean, it's it's always very hard to say without uh, any information how good certain characters are going to be that are going to be released in the future. But uh, we're going to have to find out. See, and do I like, naked, like taking naked showers? I certainly do, my friend. Favourite type of shower. How's the weather there in London today? Absolutely abysmal. It is uh, pissing it down this morning. So, yeah, not very nice out there, my friend. Yo, what is up, Metal Sonic, dude? Hope you're doing well. Are you uh, all geared up to win the the Marvel Contest of Champions tournament this year, Metal Sonic? Because, you know, you were swinging for it last year. Just remember, man, the the, the Comic-Con accounts probably don't have the Deep Wounds mastery. That was that was the only, your only failure last year. Is that those, if those accounts did have Deep Wounds, you, you might have, might have got to the final and beat Legacy. But, I don't know, Legacy played well, man. He played well on that stage last year. It's my opinion on Red Hulk. I think he's pretty good. Um, but there are better characters than Red Hulk. But he's still quite useful for a lot of stuff. Did the Venom update come out? No, it hasn't. It won't be out for at least another couple of weeks, I would assume. Oh, pardon me. Which is better, Awakening Void or Blade? I mean, uh, Void arguably needs the Awakened ability more than Blade does. But Blade's Awakened ability is very, very powerful as well. Because it you know, allows him that access to the infinite regeneration. Um... I don't know, it depends what you value more and what you need either of the characters for. So yeah, there's an argument that could be made for both. I don't think, you know, either one is a bad decision. It depends what you're using the characters for and what you need them for in the future. So yeah, I always, just in terms of rank up decisions, just think about, you know, what am I trying to do next in Marvel Contest of Champions? And what utility do I need? Which character is going to be best for helping me do that? Um, and that is always the uh, the good, uh, the best way to um, make some progression uh, choices. Uh, see him, remember me. I live near you. I got your autograph. Um, I've never given anybody my autograph in England. So, uh, yeah, the only thing I've ever signed is a, um, what was it, a magazine at New York Comic Con. So, I don't remember you, and I feel like you may be lying. So, yeah. Nice try, though. Ten, ten out of ten. But I have... Uh, I've only been ever recognised in the UK two times, and one was by um, uh, somebody who was the working in McDonald's, um, who came up to me, was incredibly nice, uh, last uh, around last Halloween. Just uh, thanked me for my videos and asked for a selfie. Uh, and he was he was really nice, and I got like recognised uh, when I was at Legoland last Sunday, and I was just absolutely dead and full of illness uh, by somebody on the concession stand uh, who I was purchasing a sprite from with my girlfriend. But yeah, he was incredibly nice as well. Shook my hand. So yeah, those are the only two times I've been recognised in the UK, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, mate. The Amazing Gamer Pros. Hey, CM, my name is Araf and I do MCOC videos. Well, I mean, 
Um, that's not... Just as a word of advice, Arav, um, the, the best way to introduce yourself to somebody is not by telling a lie that you've met them previously, which they can hold you accountable to. And that you've, you've not only met them previously, but you've got their autograph, even when you haven't. I mean, it, do it doesn't seem like the best way for us to form a good relationship built on trust there. So I, uh, I would just, you know, give you that piece of advice for the future is just, uh, just, just be honest with people uh, instead of trying to um, lie for unknown reasons. Yo, what is up, Molly Miller? Hope you're doing well. The new phone is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, here in the states, I'm a superstar. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far to be fair. You know, uh, very occasionally in America, I will get uh, recognized, mainly at Marvel contests, the Champions meetups that I've organized. But you know, in the comparative spectrum of the planet, planet, I'm still very much a, uh, a relevant uh, human being who just plays video games in his parents' garden. Um, five star featured or five star basic opening, you probably just want to go for the basics, my friend. But both of them are a gamble. Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't mean to overly roast there. I'm just giving some very honest advice. Because some of the seemingly young people that we have in chat, um, just don't appear sometimes. I mean, we, again, I, I don't want to overly generalize because I, I know in, uh, there are a lot of incredibly literate uh, younger members of the Marvel Contest of Champions community that can, you know, hold a conversation and are completely aware of good social boundaries. Um, however, with that said, there are some people that just don't, uh, I don't know, uh, just have uh, a slightly alternate way that they perceive the social landscape. Um, and I feel obligated to offer uh, a little bit of advice on how to maybe better navigate that in the future. Uh, to increase your chances at success, potentially. <laughs> uh, do I mind being? No, not at all. I, I, I don't mind. I'm, I'm very, uh, well, hopefully a very uh, approachable person. So yeah, I'm, I'm always very, very happy if anybody ever spots me out and about. Uh, if you know you want to come up and say hello uh, or whatever, that is absolutely fine. Don't have any problems with that at all. I'm very happy to uh, meet anybody. So I think at, at the moment, if Venom and Carnage stay the same, because I've seen a few of this question, uh, they look like they're going to be around the high demigod tier. But I'm very interested to see some more gameplay from both of the characters, for sure. Because, yeah, I don't know, there is a chance Venom could be... Um, could because Venom is getting so much utility, so I'm not too sure if he's that's going to make him like really relevant in stuff like Alliance War. And Venom does have additional advantages of being a much bigger character, uh, of having a really large health pool as well, which is something that is is very valuable. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see. Uh, do some hood gameplay. The Don is amazing. I used to play hood quite a lot in my freestyle master mode challenges. He is uh, a bit of an interesting character. Certainly got some utility there. Uh, what's that? Banta ET says, Hi, Cian. I met you in India in 1968 and, you, and handed me a thousand UK pounds. Uh, do you remember me? Um, I can't say I do, but if you send a thousand uh, British pounds to my uh, PayPal, uh, it might help jog my memory a bit. Just, uh, you know, just I, I'm, it's a little bit cloudy at the moment, but I believe that is potentially a way to uh, remedy the situation there, Banta. Uh, Kaganesh says, I love boobs. Uh, I would like to welcome you, Kaganesh, to being a human. Uh, the rest of us, we, we all love boobs, but, uh, uh a lot of us, uh, after the stage of puberty, uh, kind of, you know, accept that as a, a hu universal truth and, um, don't feel the need to constantly express it. But we all know they are great fun. What's my opinion on Gambit? Uh, he's not too bad. You know, he's got the stun on the special one. But his damage is just very comparatively lacking. Like, if you have a Stark and Aunt Spider-Man, you don't need a Gambit. Like, Stark and Aunt Spider-Man is... just wipes the floor with Gambit. So yeah, I don't know, Gambit's okay, he's just not good in comparison, or anywhere near some of the top performing characters in Marvel Contest of Champions. 
He's got a few cool old tricks up his sleeve now and again, which can make him all right. You know, if you get him fairly early on in the game, he's better than some rubbish four-star champions. <laughs> See, and I thought I killed you in the Battle of Blackwater. You sound and look like Lannister. Uh, gosh, I would certainly be in the Game of Thrones universe, chilling with my boy Tyrion Lannister uh, and Bronn. We'd be having an awfully good time. So yeah, that's where my allegiances lie. Um, I like Jon Snow. Jon Snow is a very noble man. Uh, I would obviously pledge to Jon Snow as the, the King of the North. Um, but simultaneously, uh, you know, I uh, Tyrion and Bronn, they're, they're my boys, really. Uh, Jamie, I don't know, he's like a... Bit, bit goes a bit too far sometimes, but uh, Jamie's obviously one of those, those characters that you're always a little bit conflicted on. Uh, <laughs> seen how many tier five basics are required to rank up the seven star trash can? So you need uh, 15 of them to uh, take your seven star trash can up to rank two, and the seven star trash can is going to have a maximum of 27 ranks, uh, and uh, obviously they increase by a requirement of five tier five basic catalyst the higher and higher you get. Um. Uh, bro, does 5-star Domino deserve a rank 5 in Generic Awakening Gem? I have a rank 5 Stark Spidey and a rank 4 Blade. Ah, uh, it depends what you really need the Domino for. Like, I kind of took her up primarily for Alliance Wall Defense in the future. But, yeah, it depends if you have an immediate use for Domino, really, and, and what exactly you would like to use her for. Hey, what is up, Bowser's Bulldog? Hope you're doing well. Good afternoon to you as well. Is Misty the weakest class at the moment? Um... I wouldn't say so, uh, just because magic is still very, very popular when it comes to, like, Alliance War offense, and she's very good at dealing with uh, a lot of some of the most difficult matchups at the moment. Um, and I think Ghost Rider, you know, he still has a really good place, and, like, Dr. Voodoo, they can be very valuable champions for... Uh, I've seen some good, like, uh, Ghost Rider Alliance War gameplay, and some people use Dr. Voodoo on Alliance War offense. He can be very good for a lot of uh, AQ paths as well for that regeneration. But, uh, yeah, it depends how you're kind of looking at it. I don't know, meta why it depends what you kind of define as a meta, really, if you're looking at, like, offense, defense. Because I think there are, there are generally, like, a, a couple of characters from every class that are swinging quite hard at the top. But every class has its good and its bad, and most of the Mystic Champions are still quite uh, powerful. No, Jamie Lannister's character arc is absolutely fantastic. He's certainly got an interesting one, because he is, I don't know, he, he still does a, a few things like throughout where you're kind of like, oh, Jamie Lannister, you son of a bitch. But uh, I, I like Jamie Lannister, man. I, I shouldn't like Jamie Lannister, all things considered. Because, you know, there are a few scenes that are um, very morally questionable. <laughs> Um, Seaton, you're the top MCOC Don, and that Domino is hella sick. Uh, thank you very much, Red Raven. I do appreciate, uh, such kind, heartfelt compliments there. Uh, and I do feel like the coolest kid on the block now after those compliments. So thank you very much. Massively do appreciate it. And I'm glad that you enjoyed the Domino. There is going to be, um, uh, some more Domino gameplay when it comes to the start of next month. I might do, uh, you know, I'm very inclined to, at some point, do, like, a Domino, uh, Labyrinth front, just for a bit of fun. Just to maybe live stream that. Maybe as a warm up to doing it on the free to play. Because, you know, on the main account, we can just, um, we got like so many crystals and stuff. But I don't, I don't want to do the run and waste resources if I'm going to have, um, if like Act 6 is going to come out. That's going to be super difficult. Rather, what is it? Wait for, yeah, wait for a bit of Act 6 and see how that turns out to be. We're still like 10 months away from next season, like AQ season, or, oh, sorry, Game of Thrones, yeah. We are still about, um, uh, I think it's somewhere between 8 to 10 months, Molly, to the best of my knowledge. I don't know what they've, uh, the planned release date is, because it used to be quite earlier in the year, but last year it was a bit later in the year, but now they've had like uh, almost two years to do the one. Okay, it's Sunday, April 21st, 2019. Roman AH coming through with those knowledge bombs. Thank you very much, man. Um, will there be any Cap Infinity War gameplay up on the channel? Yes, he's going to be after Bishop and Guillotine and uh, more Omega Red and Emma Frost gameplay though. But I'd like to take him and Sabretooth up in the near future. So yes, soon my friend. Um, what I think is a good counter for both champions. I feel like when fighting both champions, not really much has changed. Like Carnage, nothing has changed. Um, 
or do you mean like on Alliance more defense? So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to get like too into detail on kind of how they both fit into the meta at the moment, just because um, like they could change. Uh, like the, what the characters can do could change from, you know, now till the end of beta. So I don't want to get like too stuck into like theory crafting and just kind of like look at it at face level like they're doing some cool stuff they look like much better characters uh, but once the changes have been finalized uh, we're going to sort it out Farhan Mir, you know what? I do apologize, but I am almost completely oblivious to my PC specs. Uh, I know I got my computer about, uh, what was it, five years ago? I took out a loan from the bank of uh, 3,000 British pounds to uh, get my computer, which I paid off uh, over the course of two years. Um, I know it's got a, uh, what is it, NVIDIA uh, Titan in? Um, but aside from that, I do, I really do apologize, man. I'm very naive to my PC specs. I have my friend Tom, who is significantly smarter than I am when it comes to constructing computers, uh, build my PC, uh, via, uh, a website in the UK called Dino PC, who make really good PC builds. Um, and yeah, if you're in the UK, I would, uh, highly recommend them. They did a tremendous service. Oh, I know. Next year, we have uh, we have a lot of banging stuff coming out, man. New Spider-Man. We got Miss Marvel. We got the Avengers. All. Oh, I'm I'm proper buzzing. What what other movies do we have coming out next year, ladies and gentlemen? Let's let's get excited for 2019. What else is going to be coming? Maybe there's going to be a good offer in Marvel Contest of Champions. Maybe maybe we're going to see that in 2019. <laughs> Who knows, boys? Who knows? Every cloud has a silver lining. Right, let's go for this. Oh, nice one, Redbone. How how you finding it so far, my dude? Um, how much more milestone C in? I don't know, I'm gonna get to about eighty thousand in this arena. Um, I I I is that is that McGregor, Samoa Joe? I actually wasn't aware of this matchup, if uh, that is the case, but I'd like to watch it. But uh, I'm not, uh, what is it, too involved in professional fighting at the moment, so I, I'm not too aware of the scene. I've been, uh, what is it, playing, I've just been in the Marvel, Marvel and, and rap game at the moment, really. That's it, I've been, gosh, going going on a crazy Eminem binge. Actually, I didn't know about the Eminem and Mariah Carey beef. Uh, it's very interesting, though. My, uh, Eminem's... Um, like Mariah uh, diss track is fantastic. It's so savage, and I absolutely love it. But I can't believe I've I've been an Eminem fan. Well, supposed Eminem fan for so long. You know, I've listened to Eminem for, uh, for like the last like five to ten years. You know, I know the majority of lyrics, uh, quite a few songs. But I never knew about the friggin' Mariah and uh, Eminem beef. It's fantastically interesting, though. What is it? You need to watch, uh, and if you're interested, the best place to start is Mariah Carey uh, and the music video called Obsessed, uh, and then watch Eminem's uh, track called, uh, what is it, The Warning. Sorry, listen to his track. It doesn't have a music video with it, but Mariah's uh, does. And you might notice that she is trying to take the piss out of our man, uh, our, our favorite, Slim Shady. Oh yeah, Tarantino's uh, next movie comes out. That that like I I love the Tarantino movies, so that is uh, going to be a highlight of 2019 as well. A good offer, I know. Always always full of these jokes, a eh, rage, dude. <laughs> We're gonna see 25% of a tier five basic. Oh my gosh, the level of optimism there, Metal Sonic, dude. How to get T4 CC, uh, Loki, if you type in how to get tier 4 class catalyst uh, 2018 into YouTube, uh, we have a comprehensive guide on the channel on how to do that. So yeah, we'll have to see what's up. Oh, I know Red, it was absolutely fantastic, I really liked it. Can I understand Tom Hardy when he talks? I certainly can, I really like Tom Hardy. Um, I, do, I do find him a little bit peculiar in the Venom trailers, a little bit. A little bit. Just in comparison to stuff like, you know, I feel like he did really well. I've seen, like, Bronson and Legend and um, a few other Tom Hardy films. I'm try uh, I He didn't speak much in, uh, what, what is it, Fury Road. But I don't know. 
There, there is something that does sound, you know, I kind of do agree with that criticism. There is something that does sound a little bit off, maybe, with Tom Hardy and Venom. But I'm going to be the full judge of that movie when I see it. And hopefully it's really good. Uh, that's just what I want. Because I really like Tom Hardy. I think he's an absolutely fantastic actor. Uh, and I've been always been impressed whenever I've seen him in stuff. So yeah, I'm interested to uh, see, uh, see how Venom turns out to be. New Kabam to your video in 2019? I mean, I can always assure you of that. We'll have to see. Oh yes, AK. It was it was fantastic. I've seen 3 star Corvus or 4 star Yondu. You probably don't want to level up the 3 star Corvus just because he doesn't have like much reach into stuff. So I go for Yondu, just because then you've got a good heal block champion to get you through uh, some of the, you know, heal block hurdles that you may encounter uh, and stuff like Act 4. So yeah, I, I go for Yondu. Yondu can be very, very useful. So yeah, definitely take up Yondu out of those two. You can't tell these kids about Bronson? Uh, it's, I, don't, I don't think there was anything bad about Bronson. It's quite a good movie. He did, he did just grumble and mumble in Fury Road. Uh, Fury Road was, uh, was fantastically interesting. It wasn't at all what I expected it to be. But I, did, I didn't really know too much about Mad Max uh, before watching that film. I was like, damn, it's pretty damn cool. The Gambit, does the Gambit movie come out next year? I thought it, I thought it got, um, uh, what was it, delayed? Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Wasn't Channing Tatum supposed to play Gambit? Is he still playing Gambit? I really like Ch Channing Tatum. Uh, scene, will you have my babies? That's going to be a no from me. Uh, scene, did I watch Peaky Blinders? I've watched uh, a bit of it. I've watched uh, season one and a bit of season two. I really enjoyed it. I just haven't had the time to um, uh, finish it off. Hey, what's up, Blitz Notting uh, Nottingham? Uh, thank you very much for the incredibly kind words there. See, and I'm one of your avid subscribers. Uh, my username is Boston Cream, but I'm just an average player. I'm hoping to get your to your skill level playing this game. Have a fantastic day, man. Oh, Blitz, thank you very much for the incredibly kind words. Uh, and dude, I wish you all the best of luck on that pursuit. Uh, but really, you know, I'm I'm just I'm yeah your average neighborhood seated man. I've just got some okay skills. I can get a parry and evade here and there. Not doing too bad at all. Um, I'm terrified of X-Men Dark Phoenix. I'm looking forward to X-Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, has the New Mutants movie come out? The New Mutants movie, the trailer looked um, abysmal. It didn't look very good at all. It looked like a very low-budget horror film. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't terribly impressed uh, watching that trailer. But I don't know if there's been any tease for X-Men Dark Phoenix. I don't believe there has. Comes out in, in March. Oh, wow. You you would assume they'd probably start promoting it now, then. There's so much. Hmm. Interesting. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, it does come out next year as well. You're right on that one. Sabretooth, anything above 3.5 million, I believe, should be sufficient for that. Uh, can I say Void is a good counter for Omega? Yeah, he is if you uh, play well and uh, don't get too wrecked. Right. Um, oh, did Reflector 2 just crash on us? Oh, fantastic. Come on, Reflector 2. Let's get back in here. Not really too sure when, what went on there. Right, I think it just crashed on my desktop, actually. Damn, that iPhone X, the performance is too good. It's too good. Right, let's go ahead, uh, recenter this, and sort it out. Okay, let's move over a little bit. My phone charger is absolutely buggered today, so I do apologize for all these low... Uh, battery messages that keep on popping up right let's get a bit of the juicer in the mix a bit of corvus i remember corvus being insane for this day if i recall correctly um who do we want as well hyperion we've already got enough firepower to get this done uh, but let's also get um i don't know symbiote spider-man in the mix it's rank four worth it for a five star venom i would say wait until we see exactly what the buffs are going to be but they both look like they're going to be around the high demigod tier and uh yeah i i'm interested to see like venom and alliance war that's what i'm very curious about whether or not he's going to be better I, I think corvus and hyperion are probably still going to be better uh offense champions than venom 
Um, but I'm not too sure. I'm not certain on that one. So I'm interested to see what uh, comes of it. Right, we've got Massacre here. I think we'll just go five here in for this matchup. Am I still looking for some more beta gameplay? So in terms of the beta gameplay that I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for mainly Labyrinth of Legends stuff. So if you have uh, potentially access to, um, you know, 5, uh, 65, Carnage, or Venom, uh, certainly hit me up. Uh, but aside from that, I'm not looking for, like, too much just yet. But I want to see, um, you know, some of the uh, potential Labyrinth... Uh, damage and kill times of what uh, Carnage and Venom are achieving at the moment just so we can get kind of a rough idea of how they're performing in these bigger fights in comparison to uh, some of our top options right now. Dead of All Season 3. Oh, is Dead of All Season 3 in October? Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. Dead of All Season 2 is fantastic. Well, I liked, I, I really liked the Punisher. The Punisher stuff was my favorite, but uh, yeah, I think Punisher, to be honest, probably made Dead of All Season 2 for me. Aside from that, I don't know, the hand stuff, I find a little bit wishy-washy sometimes when it comes to the uh, the Netflix cinematic universe. But, um, I don't know, there's there's definitely a lot of good, and it was certainly tremendously better than Iron Fist Season 1. I haven't watched Iron Fist Season 2, actually, I'm, I'm curious, because we have um, a lot of diehard Marvel fans in here. Iron Fist Season 2? Is it worth the watch? What are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know if you enjoyed Iron Fist Season 1. And if Iron Fist Season 2 is worth the watch. Because that's what I'm curious for. And and if... Also, I'm very curious to know... Uh, what are some of the, the favourite uh, Netflix uh, Defender series? Like, what are some people's favourites in chat? And how would you uh, rank them? And like, what's your personal favourite? Or top three? Or stuff like that. Iron Fist Season 2 is rough. What do you, what do you mean by that, Molly? Like, uh, what, are we saying it's kind of emotionally rough, as in, like, a, a good adventure to go on? Or as in rough as in, uh, a little bit tough to watch? We are getting a very mixed reaction on I'm This Season 2 in chat. Right, we are going, we're going full balls. It's the only way we can do this, really. Come on, boys. Oh, come on! Easy game, easy life, man. Whew, not too bad at all, boys. Oh, I peer and put in that crazy work. Hmm, a very mixed reaction. Some people saying they like it, some people saying they are uh, not enjoying it too much. <laughs> I think some of the problem can be with the Netflix stuff. I, I, you, you do find that stuff is sometimes drawn out more than it needs to be, just to like fill a certain amount of time for episodes, or at least it, it feels that way sometimes. That's kind of the feeling that I am. Um, I get. Whereas I think, like, when you go to see a big Marvel movie, there's, like, usually a very big story they want to tell in, like, a very short amount of time. And I guess that is kind of the, the big difference between movies and t TV series. But I feel like, I don't know, some of the Netflix stuff can, you know, seem a little bit samey. Oh, I, I'm a huge fan of Jessica Jones Season 1 as well. Dead of All, all Seasons, number two, Jessica Jones, Free Defenders... Uh, Luke Cage, Dead of All, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones. Fair play, my friend. Oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind Luke Cage season one. I like, I like Luke Cage for the memes, man. He's fantastic. Um, oh, the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer looks really, really good. Um, I am very excited to see that. I don't know when it comes out. Is it next month? But yeah, it looks fantastic. The, um, guy who's in, what was it, Mr. Robot. I haven't actually watched much from Mr. Robot. Um... But I know he's, like, a tremendously good actor. He plays, uh, I think it's Freddie Mercury in that. And he just looks so good as the role, man. Like, I, I just, I saw the trailer, I was like, damn, man, they've got the, the perfect casting here. Matthias says, this game is really bad now. 
Well, Matthias, uh, obviously the expert on uh, on video games. Thank you very much for your for your input. What do you, what do you think is really bad about Marvel Contest of Champions? I, I'm curious to know what is what is the best game out there at the moment. Could it be Fortnite or maybe Minecraft? Cian, greetings from Colorado Rockies. Thank you very much, Travis Speed. Dude, hope you're having an absolutely fantastic Saturday. Yeah, what was it? The um, no, I, I, well, I don't want to say any more without giving spoiler. You know, if I say any more, it will give spoilers away. But yes, the first half of Luke Cage season one was good. I, uh, I, I like the first half for sure. my opinion on DC TV shows. I didn't mind The Flash, but I feel like DC TV shows are certainly very cheesy. Very, very cheesy. Um, and Netflix is a little bit more darker, a little bit more serious, like the Defenders, the Marvel stuff. Uh, but I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I haven't watched too much of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but that looks incredibly cheesy as well. Um, but I've heard really good things, man. People, uh, well... A bit mixed things on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but most people seem to quite enjoy it if they are a, an existing Marvel fan. Right. We're gonna absolutely miller this gentleman against the wall. Get a five combo now. Try and get a nice little stun chain going on. Think we need to slap down some... F Actually, wait, I'm going to just bait out special two here. That's maybe the best thing to do before going balls to the walls. Come on! Oh, we went for the gamble and... Right. Need to... Turn that off, whoever that was. No! They've ruined my stun combo, man. Right, perfect. Juggernaut is down. Um. Oh, thank you very much, man. Hey, Cian, any idea on why I can't join the beta test despite getting the update for it? Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got better after Season 1. Oh, yeah, I've only watched like half of Season 1. That's why I, I found it to be uh, quite cheesy so far. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was... Oh, okay. Yeah, I've only watched like the first half of Season 1. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's maybe why I kind of got the opinion, you know, didn't get properly sunk into it. Um, seeing is it realistic to go far in this game without spending a boatload of cash? Yeah, 100%. Depends what you uh, mean as far. Like, you can do all of the static content without spending a boatload of cash or any cash at all uh, on the provision that you um, get good at playing the game. You don't need to be, like, absolutely exceptional, but providing you have, like, the basics of Combat Master, then you can, uh, yeah, get very, very far and get an incredible roster without spending a dime. Uh, but yeah, the free-to-play account that we've got on the channel is a perfect example of that. If you want to check that out, again, we've got, like, tons of progression videos all throughout the game from, like, day one uh, to uh, almost 100% Act 5 now. We, we are getting there, boys. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate you all tuning in today. Uh, but aside from that, uh, we are going to end the live stream. Uh, so hopefully we can smash out uh, a couple of videos before we have to go out partying for the evening. So yeah, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Take care and have an absolutely fantastic day.